Hello everyone, it's Reese here, and I wanted to bring this particular story to your attention. It's probably not something that you've heard about. But basically, the British police are going through a series of notable changes. This has garnered the attention of a lot of people, including people in the alt-right. One such person, we have him right here, his name is Mark Colette? Maybe Colet? Forgive me, I don't actually know how to pronounce your name. He says, The indigenous people of Britain are now officially second-class citizens. Non-English speakers will be given priority by the police. And then he took a screenshot of an extremely biased article. Police chief suggests non-English speaking victims of crime will be given priority with white middle-class men at the bottom of the list. Craig Mackey said police will prioritize elderly people and non-English speakers. Over the past four years, the Met Police has had to make £600 million worth of savings. Mayor Sadiq Khan said half of London's poorly used police station front counters earlier this year. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is fake news. Fake news. Not that this isn't actually happening, but for the reason why it's happening. But perhaps I could shed a little bit more light on the story. So I have the story here in The Telegraph, which is not some white identitarian alt-right source. Probably a bit more trustworthy. Non-English speaking victims of crime to be given priority, police chief suggests. And here he is, Craig Mackey, he is the deputy commissioner. Let's read a little bit and try to understand why such a decision would be made. Victims of crime who do not speak English could be given priority by the Metropolitan Police, a senior officer has suggested. Deputy Commissioner Craig Mackey said the callers might be denied a personal visit from police unless they are deemed to be sufficiently vulnerable. He said it is absolutely feasible that face-to-face -face visits by officers could be reserved for the vulnerable, giving examples as those for whom English is not a first language, the elderly, and people with learning difficulties. Now I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. Consider why the people listed there may be given top priority. Is it because we live in a Western culture that hates straight white males? Could that be the reason? Well, that could be a reason. But applying any level of Occam's razor to this issue, when it specifically comes to people who do not speak English as a first language, a reason I can see it being imperative to dispatch an officer for a face-to-face -face visit is because the person on the line might not be able to sufficiently explain their problem. This is potentially a problem that could require immediate assessment from a law enforcement official. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mr. Mackey said the crimes such as vehicle thefts are the types of offenses that officers might not be sent to in person unless the victim was assessed to require one under a new triage system. Now let's get into why they're doing this. And this pretty much shoots any kind of victim narrative in the foot. He suggested the idea could help the Met to cope with a reduction in funding. In the last four years, the force has had to make 600 million pounds of savings. And it is due to lose an extra 400 million pounds by 2020. This is a financial issue. And don't get me wrong, I really think this sucks. I think that based on the information that we have right here, the Met Police Department should be given more funding. It's ridiculous that a service as important as the police is that underfunded. But we can't always get what we want. And a big point that I rail against on this channel is idealism. We are forced to operate within the parameters of reality. You are given a limited budget, and you have to make that budget work. And you begin to realize that for the sake of efficiency and pragmatism, that some corners are going to have to be cut. You're going to go out of your way, restructure your department, and prioritize the calls that are the most important for people who are in the most immediate danger. This is an intelligent thing to do, obviously. It's not ideal, I understand that, but the world never is. Mackie even goes on to say it here. Speaking to the Evening Standard, Mr. Mackey described how the force will have to change its approach to cope with less money. He said, that's where you get into some of the difficult areas around, do you always offer the same service to everyone? In a utopian world, absolutely. In the real world, not doable. It's really not. 
It opens up a very interesting conversation revolving around morality and other such issues. But quite frankly, and this is a very cold and blunt thing to say, not all 911 calls are equal. Not all situations require an officer on the scene. And really, just the cherry on top to wrap everything up, the fact that people are trying to racialize this is no better than any BLM activists. This issue has nothing to do with race. You make it about race because you project and your life revolves around the topic of race. But that's you. There are far more realistic reasons to explain why this is happening than the whites are being kept down. Just maybe. This is a completely conspiratorial take on an issue that is so easy to explain. I did want to very quickly bring that to your attention. Let me know what you think down below. I would love to hear, especially from the people in my audience who are alt-right, because I think that even you would agree this is not a good look for your political movement.